What up, everybody? Instructor Beats back again uh, here with our second lesson in our circle unit. What is pie? Um, and so, as you can see, not pie that you would eat. Um, and so, we need to know two different math terms here. Now, this is going to be a, uh, a shorter lesson. Uh, I'm going to give you a companion video if you want to watch it in a second. And there's no IXL. But this is a really, really important concept because we're going to be using pi a lot. And I don't just want you to think it's a random number. I want you to have some form of understanding of what it is. So we're going to be using the diameter and the circumference today. Uh, the diameter is a straight line segment that passes through the center of a circle and whose endpoints are on the circle. We talked about that last lesson. And their circumference is the perimeter of the circle. Now, fun fact, uh, perimeter is the sum of the edges, but because a circle has no edges, they couldn't use the word perimeter, okay? Because um, you can't have the sum of the edges if there are no edges. So they came up with a new word called circumference. I don't know why, they could just call it the perimeter of a circle, but circumference is a cool sounding word. So, what is pi, okay? Pi is an irrational number, okay, which means, um, But to the thousandth digit, so I want you to hear that, the thousandth digit, it looks like this. 3.1459265358979, and I'm not going to keep going, okay? But it's an irrational number. It's a never-ending number. It's going to continue to go on forever and ever and ever. Nobody knows the exact amount of pi. They can only approximate it or estimate it because even if you went to the... 300,000 digit, it's going to continue to go on. Uh, matter of fact, the world record, I believe, of someone memorizing pi is like the uh, 111, yeah, 111,000 digit. So um, this is a thousand digits, and they memorized a hundred times more than that, okay, which is pretty crazy. So that's what pi is, but Typically, we don't want to write that, okay? So if you are going to represent pi, you are going to use this symbol right here, which has been around since about the 1700s, or you can just approximate pi, and typically people cut it off after the tenth digit, um, and you do 3.14. Matter of fact, NASA uses pi a lot. You'll see why in a second. We'll talk about it. But when NASA is making... Um, space missions or everything else they're doing they don't they only go to the one two three four fifth digit in pi when they're doing this okay um so nobody really ever uses that but if you type in pi into your calculator or you use 3.14 you'll get an approximate answer so that's what it is but what is it right yeah or like okay i get it. it's a number but what is it what is irrational so pi is the ratio of their circumference in the diameter of a circle, okay? So circumference to diameter, we have it right here, or a lot of times you see it written as a the fraction form of ratio, circumference to a diameter. And this is always equal to pi, okay? No matter how large the circle is, the uh, ratio between the length of the circumference and the diameter is pi. So to do this, we are going to use a ruler and a compass. So I'm bringing this compass over here, okay? I'm going to make the radius of my first circle two, there we go. And I'm gonna draw it, oh, no, maybe, I, there we go. And I'm gonna draw my circle. Okay, so here's my first one. Let me move this stuff out of the way. Okay, let me move that out of the way now. And, I guess, oop, I keep forgetting to do that. It should be the center. And so if the radius is two, that means the diameter would be four. And it was in inches because I used my ruler. If my diameter is four, okay, and I, and I measure my circumference, um, and again, measuring, we're gonna do a whole lesson on this, measuring circumference for a, a circle, a curved object, it's kind of hard, and we'll talk about that in a lesson. But the circumference for this circle, I measured it, okay? My circumference, was 6.283 inches. So if I started here, so if I took scissors right here and I cut that circle and it kind of unraveled, right? Kind of unrolled like you're unrolling a sleeping bag. It would be six and two, eight, three inches long. 
So the ratio of circumference to diameter, or if I put my circumference over my di diameter, so 6283, divided by 4 inches, and that's going to give me 3.1415. Now, it stopped right here. Okay, again, this is just an estimate, but you can notice I have the first two digits right, so I am correct to 1% of the actual value of pi. So the ratio between those is 3.14. That's what you round it to. And this doesn't matter. No, it, this is the same no matter how big the circle is. So yes, okay, I get it. It's a ratio. You just showed it to me with the circle. It doesn't matter how big the circle is, but where did it come from? Who came up with this pi, okay? Um, and so this is a clip from an article by Stephen Bogert from the Scientific American. So I'm not plagiarizing. I'm not claiming it as being mine. Um, and so the importance of pi has been recognized for at least 4,000 years. A history of pi notes that by 2000 BC, the Babylonians and Egyptians were aware of the existence okay, and the significance of a constant. We call pi a constant okay, because it's... It's not a variable. A lot of times we use uh, we use shapes and letters to be variables, which means it can change based on the equation, based on the expression. A pi is a constant. Anytime you see that symbol, it's 3.14159672555, whatever all the numbers are, but really 3.14 okay, is what typically is a math convention that you're going to use. All right. Um, and so it's always that. That's what constant means. And again, they recognized, and so the reason they came up with this, the reason they're like, wait a minute, what's going on? They recognized when you had a perfect circle, this isn't going to be perfect, no matter how small or how large it is, they recognized that it looked like the diameter and their circumference, there was a ratio between. As the circumference got bigger, the diameter was getting bigger at the same rate, right? Um, and they started recognizing this and they're like wait a minute there's something going on there's a ratio between these things and that's where they came up with pi now both of them approximated um what it was okay and later mathematicians in ancient greek greek greece particularly archimedes improved on those okay so what archimedes did is he was like okay wait a minute i know that there's a relationship between the diameter and their circumference i can visually see it okay but how do I figure out what that ratio is? How do I figure out what that relationship is? And so what he did is he made a circle and he made the diameter one inch, right? And so if it's circumference to diameter, if your diameter is one, oh, there we go, equals pi. If your diameter is one, that means pi would be your circumference because pi divided by one Oops, pi divided by one is going to equal pi, right? A number divided by one is itself. So if you make the diameter one, whatever the circumference is would have to be that ratio. It would have to be pi. And so he did some really cool things. Uh, he used squares on the outside and inside, and he started using these shapes to try to figure out, okay, if the diameter is one, what is their circumference? And he came up with an approximation around 3.14. And then eventually people started picking up on this. And as we have more and more technology, now we use computers to do this, which is why we're so accurate um, and people can memorize over 100,000 digits of pi. But that's where it came from. That's, this, they Just visually, you can see the relationship and they started to explore that relationship. They were problem solvers. They were being good learners. And eventually they started to figure out what that relationship was, what that ratio was for the circumference and the diameter. And again, they used a diameter of one, which meant that circumference would have been that ratio because anything divided by one is pi. If this is interesting to you, if you want some further explanation, you can check out the video. This is not my video. I don't know the guy. I don't know anything about the guy, okay? Um, I just watched this video because I started thinking about pi and diving into it for this lesson. And it's such a cool topic. Um, and so, Go ahead and click that link and you can watch like a 16 minute video about how more how they came up with pi who did it the chinese were involved you had europeans involved you had americans involved it's really cool and then on march 14th you can celebrate pi day by baking a pie official national holiday you're welcome